Welcome to the Billing Seventh Day Adventist Church online worship service. I'm Pastor Stephen Carlisle, and I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. I realize that there are many streams that you could be choosing from this morning, and the fact that you've chosen us right here in Billings, Montana, well, that just makes my heart happy. And to my church family, I really miss you. In fact, it's just not the same when we can't shake each other's hand and wish each other a happy Sabbath. And so thank you to those of you that sent me a video this last week. It allows us to see some of your faces as we get to wish each other a happy Sabbath. The Pellandinis are here to wish you a happy I Sabbath. Woo! 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 Yeah. Woo! We miss you all. Bye. Bye. Feliz Sabado. Praying you have a blessed Sabbath from Dan and Julie. Happy Sabbath from Ryan. I hope that you're all having a great day, and I cannot wait to see all of you again soon. Happy Sabbath from the Watsons. <laughs> Happy Sabbath from Rochelle. Happy, Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Hi. Hi. Happy Sabbath from the Lang family. Happy Sabbath from the Hansons. We miss you all and look forward to hopefully being together very soon. Take Amen. care. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. A Sabbath. Happy, Happy Sabbath, Sabbath from, from the, the Benders. Thank you so much for sending me those videos. I thoroughly enjoyed getting them and seeing them and putting that together. If you would like to send me your Happy Sabbath video, just send it to me through Facebook Messenger. We'd love to be able to include it in the next one. It's now time for our children's story, and so I want to invite, again, our parents just to kind of step back a little bit, let the kids get the front row, as there's a special story just for them. There once was a man named Daniel. He loves God, no matter what the consequences. But there was two bad men that went to the king and said, Oh, Lord, dear king, I would like to make a law that says anybody must pray to you. If they don't, they shall be cast into the den of lions. Daniel didn't matter. He just wanted to pray to God. So he opened up to the window and prayed. But when he got caught... They grabbed him and threw him into the lion's den. Because of his faithfulness, an angel came and went into the den. He spent overnight, but you know, the king couldn't sleep. So then, the two men and the king Went over to the next day that the king said, Oh, dear Daniel, did your God save you from the lions? He said, Yes, my king, my God saved me from the lions. An angel came to rescue me. So then they opened the gate and brought Daniel out. But after that, the angel left. And guess what? The man fell in. Oh dear, now they got eaten up. Yum, 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 yum. And then, and then Daniel was safe and the king said, Everybody must only pray to Daniel's God. He is the true God. Now don't lie and listen to the pastor. Bye! <laughs> I'm sure you've noticed in this pandemic the vast differences of people that unfold. You have some people that are doomsdayers, that the world is going to end, while you have other people that say, this is not a big deal at all. You have people that are hoarding toilet paper, and you have people that are making surgical masks for nurses and doctors. You have people that are infected going into communities and stores and coughing on people, and then you have people that are risking their lives every day, giving their time and energy in the trenches of hospitals and urgent cares, taking care of the people that are sick. These differences that we look at, we can easily judge, but let me tell you something. These differences, this battle that goes on, is going on right inside of our hearts. 
You see, every day we have choices to make, whether we're going to look out for self or be selfish and greedy, or we recognize that the things that are around us are simply things that God has blessed us with. In times of crisis, it's easy to want to hang on to everything. But we need to remember and recognize that the things that we're holding on to are not our own. See, as Christ followers, we believe that God gives us everything that we need. We believe that everything that we have is not really our own, but he's called us to be good stewards of it. And so in a time of giving, this is, this is one of those things that we wrestle with in our own hearts. Could I use this? Could I hang on to this? Do I, should I give this away? Really, it's about, God, what do you want me to do? I believe that God loves a cheerful, joyful, and generous giver, someone who trusts him and is going to be faithful to him. And so it doesn't matter how much, it doesn't matter all those things, it matters what God has placed upon your heart and you following what God has placed upon your heart. This isn't about me, this is about each one of our relationship with God and how we wrestle with the things that we have. Today you have a couple of opportunities to give. You can give through Adventist Giving, which is an online, secure, fast, easy way to give. Or you can request a tithe envelope. We'd be happy to mail one to you. Just request it at the office or email us. We'll get that out to you and you can send that into the church. Either way, it doesn't matter how you do it. What matters is that we are faithful to our God. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I know that during this time we see these these differences and these extremes followed up, Lord. We want to be on the side that you want us to be on. And so we ask you, Father, show us. Show us what you want to do. Show us how you want us to be generous. Show us how we can show your love. Remind us, God, that you are the owner of everything. Lord, I would ask a special blessing over those who are watching here today. I don't know what situation that they're in, but you do, Lord, and you have it all in your hands even in the most difficult, trying times, I know, God, that you are here with each one of us. Thank you for being a God that we can trust. In Jesus' name, amen. It's now time for our scripture and our prayer. Today's scripture reading is found in 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that it is Sabbath. Please be with the pastor as he speaks. Please be with Mr. Julian and Miss Iva. And please be with us as we go into the Sabbath day. Amen. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. Jesus, you can have all this world. Give me Jesus. When I am alone, when I am alone, Jesus 
Jesus And when I come to die And when I come to die Oh, when I come to die Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus You can have all this hard to believe that it was about 10 years ago that I took a group of youth down to the Dominican Republic. We went down for about three and a half weeks to preach. We shared the truth about Jesus' second coming. We talked about the love of Jesus and how he wants to redeem us. It was just a a powerful time. But you know, when you're gone that long, not only do you miss your family and do you miss your friends, but you know what you really miss? food. You see, the food down there was fantastic, but I will say that in the evenings, they weren't exactly prepared to make us a meal, and so what we ended up getting was a styrofoam container filled with cantaloupe. Now, for those that know me or have known me for a long time, you know that I don't do watermelon. Sorry, guys. I just don't. However, I will eat a watermelon before I will eat a cantaloupe. Those things, mm, anyways, I'm not going to go there. Every single night, I would open up this styrofoam container, and every single night, I would try to take a bite of it, and every single night, I would gag on it. There was just no way I was going to eat cantaloupe, no matter how hungry I was. Well, there was one evening that we found out that there was a little restaurant across the the way from where we were staying. And so one night, me and and a couple other sponsors, we walked across the street over to this little restaurant. And you know what they had? French fries. And I have to say, even to this day, those were the best French fries that I've ever had in my entire life. They probably won't, but at those moments, those were the best French fries I've ever had. So a couple of nights went by, and... The, uh, some of the kids that we had taken really, really wanted to go to this restaurant that we had been bragging about. And so we started along the way to go to that restaurant, which is literally right across from where we were staying, and it was closed. And we're like, man, I can't believe that that place is closed tonight. And so the security guard that was there, he said, oh, but there's a restaurant just, just right down the way. You get down just a little ways and, and cross the street And we're like, okay, so we start walking at night in a foreign country. And sure enough, it wasn't just a minute or two into our walk when a moped pulled up with three guys on it waving guns and yelling at us. I remember to this day my reaction was, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I was so terrified in that moment, trying to pull back some of my, the, the kids that I had with me, trying to protect them. Uh, I didn't know, you know, you just, in those moments, you don't, you can't take for granted that, it, that maybe the gun wasn't loaded or whatever the case was. We threw down the things that we had in our pocket for them to take, and they, they drove off with it. 
And I remember getting back to where we were staying and some of us were just really shook up and we were trying to comfort one another. But fear had set in. Before that moment, we didn't think anything about it. But after that moment, everywhere we went, we had that fear within us. I don't know if you've had a similar uh, in interaction before or maybe you've been in a close call with an accident maybe you've been into a car accident whatever the case is that there are things now that trigger that fear but the question is is what do we do with that fear you know as Christians as Christ followers those who've accepted Christ or those who are considering accepting Christ we have to be thinking there's got to be something different about what the Bible says about what God has to offer than what the rest of the world goes through there's there's so many people that get a thrill from fear that they pay for people to scare them they go places for people to scare them and I gotta say like that's just not my jam like I am not a fan of being scared all the time or scared any time for that matter Fear is something that can overtake our hearts. And all of us have different reactions to fear. Some of us have the, the, this fight or flight. We, we will we'll fight, we'll, we will get really angry and we'll fight back. Other times we will run and then sometimes we'll just freeze and we won't do anything. Now, some fear is healthy. I get that, you know. We have fear that if... if I walk into the middle of the street when a car is going 45 miles an hour, there is a healthy fear there that keeps me out of the road. But when fear overtakes and it starts to control various aspects of our life, it can cause a lot of damage. I have to say that during this time, there has been a lot of worry, there's been a lot of anxiety, but we also have encountered some fear. Fear about what's going to happen, what's going to happen next. And I want to share with you some words out of God's word today that hopefully will encourage you. In fact, I want to start a new series. Now, in this series, we're going to be looking at at a specific verse that Paul writes that I believe that we need, especially right now. I've got to say, throughout these few weeks, as you've just kind of seen this impending situation get bigger and bigger and bigger, I'm, I'm a little weary and a little tired of pandering to that worry and anxiety. I think it's time that we shift and that we move into a different direction. And so that's what this is all about. Father in heaven, as we open up your word here this morning, I invite you into our homes. I invite you into our church. I invite you anywhere that we are. And I pray that you would Fill me with your Holy Spirit, God, that you would anoint my lips and anoint my mind, that the words that I speak would be from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week, we talked about what Jesus had to say about worry in the Sermon on the Mount. We finished with looking at a scripture in Philippians where Paul talks about do not be anxious about anything but pray about everything. He also talks about that the the peace of God would protect our hearts and our minds. We also talked about that we need to be thinking on things that are true. If you missed last week, I invite you to go back and watch it because there are some really key texts that will help you during this time. But as, as I was just previously talking, I believe that it's time that we shift the way that we're thinking. I believe it's time that we start looking forward rather than being so reactive. And so I want us to go back to the words of Paul, maybe not in, in the book of Philippians, but as, uh, as was read earlier in 2 Timothy, Paul is writing a letter to his buddy, to his colleague, to his pal, Timothy. He obviously knows Timothy, they're close, and as he begins to write, something is going on in Timothy's life. Maybe it's the fact that Paul is going through persecution. Maybe the fact that many Christians are going through persecution. Maybe that there's this this worry and concern in Timothy on whether he can really do what God had called him to do. And maybe there's something going inside of him going, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And because of those thoughts, or maybe this is just Paul is just looking at and saying, maybe he just needs a word of encouragement. I don't know why Paul wrote the words that he wrote, but we can come up with some ideas as he goes through these scriptures. 
as we start in 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting in verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. What an introduction, first and foremost. Right? I, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and self-control. This section right here, as Paul introduces, I want us to just hone in on what Paul is saying. Number one, remember your calling, Timothy. Remember that you are called by God, that we are here because God wants us here. We are here doing what God has called us to do because that's the will of God. Remember your calling. Remember your faith. Remember the decisions that you have made in the past, remember. And finally, remember the gift. Remember the gift from God. Now, as we look at those things, as, as he is telling that, I think that as your pastor, whether virtually or whether you're in my congregation, I have to say the same thing. Remember your calling. Remember that you have been created for a purpose. You have been created for God to do something in you and through you to change this world forever. Remember your calling. Remember your faith. Remember that it is God who has given you that faith. The decisions that you've made, the trust that you have in him, the word that you read, everything that God has given to you, remember that faith and remember the gift. Remember the gift from God. And the question is, is what is this gift? As we look at this, as we see this, this letter unfolding, he reminds Timothy to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. There's one thing that the New Testament church believed that when you were at conversion, when you were converted and you accepted Christ into your life, a lot of times they would lay their hands upon them for the mission, for what you're doing, for, the, for, the, for recognizing that God has entered your life. Now this, a lot of times we use laying on of hands of like entering into an office or entering into a ministry and although those are not wrong, they used it as this is the time that the Holy Spirit is going to fill you and move mightily in your life. And I believe what Paul is reminding Timothy here is that remember when I laid hands on you, remember when we prayed over you, remember you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember the gift. I love in this next verse, for God gave us a spirit before you move on to the next part that we love, God gave us a spirit. Just think about this for a moment. God gave us a spirit. When Paul is talking about the spirit here or a spirit, when he's looking at the context and you look at Romans and other writings of Paul, Paul is a firm believer that when he talks about the spirit, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. God has given you the Holy Spirit, a spirit, not of fear, not of those things, but of power and of love and of self-control. God has given you the Spirit. This morning, that's where I want us to start and that's where I want us to end because if we go any further than that, we're going to miss the point. 
that yes, we need to remember our calling that God has put upon our life. Yes, remember the faith, the decisions that we've made and the faith that God has put upon, put upon our, our hearts. But we also remember, 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 you and I have been given something that combats what this world can give. You and I have been given a strength and a power that goes far beyond the fears of a virus or far beyond the, the, the calamities of this world. This, what God has given to us, is something so much bigger and so much more powerful. It is the spirit, the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is the same spirit that lives within our lives. And he says, remember that spirit. Remember the spirit that God has given to you. Your life is never going to be the same. Can you imagine what it would look like in your life right now if you just stopped the worry, stopped the concern, and you just went to God and you said, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with that spirit, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that same spirit that Paul was telling Timothy to remember, that fanning flame spirit that grows within us. Each one of us can take that time to stop and to pray and to ask for the Holy Spirit during this time. And you know what I believe is gonna happen? God is going to answer that prayer. And when God answers that prayer, can you imagine what it would look like in your life? That when you wake up in the morning, the Spirit is speaking to you, giving you peace, speaking through His Word, speaking to your heart, leading you and guiding you. When we think about the power that God has given to us, wow, amazing. Ask for the Spirit. As Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray in Luke, he says, ask, seek, and knock. If your earthly father knows how to give good gifts, imagine what your heavenly father wants to give to you, even more of the Holy Spirit. God wants to give us that spirit because it brings us closer to him. It helps us in times of trial, but it also helps us in times of temptation. It helps us to love more. It helps us to pray. That spirit changes our lives forever. So we start here with that. Can you imagine what it would look like if all of us stopped the, the concern, stopped the worry, we just simply prayed the prayer, Father, fill me, please, with your spirit. Remind me that that spirit is there for me to ask for. And God, fill it with me and change my heart and change my mind. Focus me on what it is that you want me to be focusing in on. Our lives and our church will never be the same when we start praying for the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. I thank you so much for the power of the Holy Spirit and the promise of the Holy Spirit. And just as Paul was reminding Timothy, I thank you for the reminder of that in my life. And I'm thankful that I have an opportunity to remind my brothers and sisters in Christ who are watching today that we need the Holy Spirit now more than ever. That power, that power that transforms our heart, that transforms our mind, that changes the way we think, it changes the way that we act, it changes the way that we love. It changes the way that we serve you, God. And so, Lord, we were reminded that you gave us the Spirit. God, as we continue in this series and we learn about what that Spirit can do, I just pray that first and foremost, we start with asking. Thank you, God. That you promise that when we ask, that we receive. And we thank you that we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you today. I hope that you've been blessed by today's worship experience and I know that God has plans for your life. Stay close to him during this time. Ask him for the spirit and I know that God is going to answer those prayers. May God bless you.